How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic one, volume five. Make sure you've got your calculator and your data book for this one. So topic one, volume five, what is molecular mass? We discuss relative atomic mass, AR, which come up in topic one, 1.1. 1 .1. And then we look at relative formula mass and molar mass, which is given the symbol MR. IB understandings, masses of atoms are compared on a scale relative to carbon-12 and are expressed as relative atomic mass, AR, and relative formula mass, or molar mass, MR. Molar mass, capital M, has the units G, mole to the minus one. I'll probably call it MM because of molar mass. The text ref down below, page 14 to 20, check it out. So a couple of definitions. The first definition is from topic two, relative atomic mass, AR. It's the weighted mean of the masses of the naturally occurring isotopes on the scale in which the mass of an atom of carbon 12 is exactly 12 units. The relative formula mass, the MR, is also described as the molar mass, which I will usually say is MM. The relative formula mass of a molecule is the sum of the relative atomic masses of the elements that it's made up of as given in the molecular formula. Now the molar mass will have units and its units are grams per mole. The formula mass won't have units because it's an atomic mass. We can calculate the relative formula mass or the molar mass from its relative atomic masses, the masses from the periodic table. The molar mass of an atom or ion is the mass of one mole of that atom, ion or molecule. And if you remember back to the earlier videos where I had the samples of ice, carbon and sugar, you would have seen that the mass was equal to the molar mass. So to calculate the relative formula mass or the molar mass, we need to use the data book. So sulfur hexafluoride, SF6. I tend to write molar mass as mm because we're getting a lot of the m's and n's in there. To calculate it, we look up the relative molecular mass of sulfur and then we plus that to six times the relative atomic mass of fluorine. From the data book, we can see that the mass of sulfur is 32.06 and then we add that to six times the mass of fluorine, which is 19. That gives us the relative formula mass or molar mass, which is 106.06. .06. And if we're calculating the molar mass, it will have units of grams per mole. The second one, magnesium nitrate. A little bit more challenging because we have the brackets, but just write it the way that you see it, type in the calculator the same way. We have the molecular mass of magnesium plus two times what's inside the brackets. So inside the brackets, we have the mass of nitrogen plus three times the mass of oxygen. Now you put that into the calculator exactly the way that you see it. You sub in the values and then put them into the calculator. So putting, into the, putting in the values, we have the mass of magnesium 24.31 plus two times the mass of nitrogen, which is 14.01 plus three times the mass of oxygen. That is the exact way you would put it into the calculator with the brackets, and we get the value of 148.33 grams per mole for molar mass, no units if we were to ask to find the formula mass. The other ones are there, vitamin C, calcium hydroxide, potassium dichromate, and silver chloride. What I want you to do is pause the video and have a go at the rest, and I'll write up the answers. When I wrote these ones up, I didn't have a periodic table um, that had two decimal places, so I think I've only got them to one decimal place, but the process will still be the same. So vitamin C has a molar mass of 176.0 grams per mole. Calcium hydroxide is 146.1 grams per mole. Potassium dichromate, 294.2 grams per mole.
And finally, silver chloride, 143.3 grams per mole. You will become so good at these that you don't need to do that setting out in the red. It will be simply a matter of determining the molar mass very quickly and then writing it down. So now we come to a very important formula. The amount in mole N in a sample, the mass, little m, and the molar mass, capital M, are related by the expression. Now, I will use mm for molar mass, that's just what I do, molar mass mm, and I tend to write the word mass for the sample um, because it just makes a bit more sense to me, otherwise the letters are too confusing. So the amount in mole n equals the mass divided by the molar mass. It's a very important formula for us to remember. We can also from this equation work out the mass of an amount in mole. If we transpose the equation, mass equals mole times molar mass, or perhaps we need to find the molar mass, which would be mass over mole. Those three formulas are not given in the data book. You need to remember them, so it's important to know those formulas. There's a little triangle there to try and help you. Okay, so we're going to use the mole formula. Calculate the amount in mole of 1.2 grams of nitric acid. Remember the formula, number of moles equals mass over molar mass. So calculate the amount in mole, that's asking us to find N, and we've been given a mass. The molar mass is something that we're able to find. We can use the periodic table to find it. So starting off our working out, we have the number of moles of NO equals mass over molar mass. I need to find the molar mass, so I can do that using the periodic table mass of nitrogen plus mass of oxygen. Doing a little side calculation will give me 30.01 grams per mole as the molar mass. Now I can go back to my formula. My mass was 1.2 grams. My molar mass, which I just worked out, is 30.01. Subbing those numbers in, I can get the number of moles. Two significant figures because our mass was two significant figures. Calculate the number of nitric oxide molecules in this sample. Well, that's going back to the first video where we need to find big N. Big N of NO equals mole times Avogadro's number, which is the amount in mole which we found, 0 0.040, multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Putting those into the calculator, Remember to keep the value from part one in your calculator and then just multiply it to avoid a problem called truncation. We get 2.4 times 10 to the 22 molecules. For example number two, calculate the mass of 1.5 mole of methane. So slightly different, they're asking us to find the mass and they've given us an amount in mole. So I need to rearrange the equation to find the mass. Mass is equal to mole times molar mass. Again, look at the working out. It's important that we do that. Molar mass of CH4 will be the mass of carbon plus the mass of hydrogen. Carbon is 12.01 and hydrogen is 1.01. .01. So we add those two things together to get the molar mass and eventually you'll become quick at this and you won't need to work it out um, with the working, you'll just be able to calculate it. 16.05 grams per mole. So to calculate the mass, we have 1.5 times 16.05. Again, two significant figures because my mole only had two significant figures. So we have our answer accurate to two significant figures. Okay, maybe we're asked to calculate the number of moles of an ion in a sample. So in this example, calculate the number of mole of each ion in 15.5 grams of aluminium chloride. The formula for aluminium chloride is AlCl3, which means we have one aluminium ion and three 
chloride ions. So the ratio between aluminium and chloride is a 3 to 1. So the first thing we need to do is to calculate the number of moles of aluminium chloride molecules because that's what we've been given information about. So we start off by doing the mass over the molar mass. We need to work out the molar mass of AlCl3. Mass of aluminium is 26.92 plus 3 times the mass of chlorine, 35.45. Doing our side calculation, the molar mass is 133.27 grams per mole. So we return to our number of moles formula. We have the mass, which is 15.5 grams. We divide that by the molar mass, and that's going to give us our number of moles of AlCl3. 0.116 mole. Three significant figures, because the mass has three significant figures. Now what we want to do is use the equation or use the formula to work out the number of moles of each ion. So for every one AlCl3 molecule we have, we have one aluminium ion. So the number of moles of aluminium will be the same. It's a one to one ratio. The chloride though, for every one molecule of AlCl3, we have three three ions of chloride. So we need to multiply that by three. So we have three times the number of moles of AlCl3, three times 0 0.116, which is 0 0.349 mole. Okay, another type of question we might be asked is which contains the greater number of particles? 100 grams of water or 125 grams of ammonia. Now to answer this question, what we want to do is we want to work out the number of moles of both. And the one that has the greatest number of moles will be the one with the greatest number of particles. Because remember to find the number of particles, we multiply the mole by Avogadro's constant. So the one with the greatest number of mole will have the greatest number of particles. So the number of moles of water can be found by doing mass over molar mass. We have 100 grams, the molar mass of water is 18.02. So we have 5.55 mole of water in that sample. The number of moles of ammonia will be mass over molar mass. The mass again is 100, the molar mass will be different, which is 17.03. So that's going to give us a bigger number because we have a smaller mole mass, 7.34 moles. So NH3 will have a greater number of particles because it has a greater number of mole. A bit of a trick for this one is if they ask you to do this question, you can just look at the molar mass. If the amount of sample is the same, the one with the lowest molar mass will have the greatest number of moles or the greatest number of particles. Volume one, uh, topic one, volume five, some top tips. You really must practice these applications and it's all about practice, practice, practice. And there's no way that I can give you an example of every type of question that you'll get asked. So you need to have some problem solving skills and you need to practice those skills to make sure that you know what to find and know how to apply the formulas. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.